Dear students, in this module, we will discuss advanced methods of water treatment. Water is being polluted by domestic, sewage and industrial processes. The waste water can be purified by a series of steps. The primary and secondary treatment removes most of the organic waste and suspended solids present in wastewater. However, up to secondary level of treatment, the effluent water is reusable for industrial and domestic recycle but does not meet the quality criteria of drinking water. The effluent from a typical secondary treatment plant still contains 20 to 40 microgram per liter BOD, which may be objectionable in some streams. Therefore, to meet the quality of effluent provided by secondary treatment, it is essential to carry out some additional treatment, usually called tertiary or advanced treatment. Advanced waste water treatment is done to produce an effluent of higher quality than normally achieved by secondary treatment processes or containing unit operations not normally found in secondary treatment. Tertiary treatment removes dissolved organic and inorganic substances and nutrients. So now we will study the methods for removal of dissolved solids by various processes such as micro straining, adsorption, reverse osmosis, electrodialysis and ion exchange methods. The nutrients present in wastewater can also be removed by several methods. So here we will also study the removal of nitrogen and phosphorus nutrients from the wastewater. It is a simple desorption process which is used to lower the ammonia content of wastewater. Nitrification and denitrification techniques can also be employed as an alternative method to remove nitrogen. Phosphorus in wastewater mainly exists in the form of orthophosphates. Biological and chemical methods are used for its removal. Let us understand it with the help of graphics and visuals. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the various advanced techniques of water purification, learn the concept of electrodialysis, ion exchange, etc., identify the need for advanced water treatment, and learn the concept of nutrient removal. The process of tertiary treatment takes place in three steps. Removal of suspended solids using microstaining, removal of dissolved solids with processes like absorption, reverse osmosis, electrodialysis, ion exchange, and nutrient removal, which includes the removal of nitrogen and phosphorus. Let us discuss how the removal of suspended solids is done. For the removal of very small particles that have been carried over from a secondary treatment settler, micro-straining is used. A micro-strainer is made up of a rotating drum supporting a very fine stainless steel or plastic screen. The one end is sealed and the other end allows the water to enter or exit the drum. Very fine fabrics of stainless steel wire are used for filtration that cannot be seen by the naked eyes. This stainless wire has been woven on special high precision looms for producing microfabrics. The secondary effluent enters into the drum from the center and flows out through the sides with the mat of solids accumulating on the screen inside the drum. The top of the drum remains above the water level 
and is continuously cleaned by water jets on the outside. The screenings are collected in a trough suspended towards the top of the drum interior. The microfabrics can intercept a large proportion of solids that are smaller than the already minute apertures in the woven fabrics. Microorganisms ranging in size from 7 to 12 micrometer are removed by this method. The impurities removed by micro straining are paper fiber, humus, fly ash from power stations and microorganisms like diatones and green algae. Dissolved solids may be organic or inorganic in nature. The most common technique used for the removal of both dissolved solids is absorption. Adsorption is a surface phenomenon and activated carbon is the most commonly used absorbent. It is prepared by subjecting charcoal to oxidizing steam at high temperatures of about 950 degrees centigrade. Water is released from the charcoal to develop a very porous structure in the charcoal and thus the absorption process increases. Activated charcoal is capable of absorbing a wide variety of compounds and when it becomes saturated with impurities, it is heated in a vacuum to about 980 degrees centigrade and the absorbates are driven off. The absorbent can be reused. Reverse osmosis or RO is used to remove dissolved salts from industrial wastewater and has become more popular at homes for water purification. This process effectively reduces the concentration of dissolved solids including a variety of ions, metals and suspended particles. To understand the process of reverse osmosis, one should first understand the osmosis process. Osmosis is the natural process which involves the fluid flows from lower concentration to higher concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. The pressure which is exerted by the solvent as it passes through is called osmotic pressure. But opposite to that, in reverse osmosis, pressure is applied to the concentrated solution reversing the natural direction of flow forcing water across the membrane from concentrated solution to dilute solution. Let us study it in detail. When contaminated water is placed above a semi-permeable membrane and subjected to high pressures, pure water flows down the semi-permeable membrane and solute molecules, impurities, which are larger than the pore size of the membrane, are retained by the membrane. Pressure applied in reverse osmosis is of several order of magnitude in excess of the natural osmotic pressure. RO is effective in the removal of the particles in the size ranges from 10 to the power of minus 4 to 10 to the power of minus 2 micrometer and operates at an efficiency greater than 90%. An RO membrane can typically produce 100 to 35 gallons of water per day and it depends on several factors including membrane type and condition, operating conditions and the degree of impurity in wastewater. RO membranes are effectively non-porous and significantly reduce total dissolved solids, heavy metals, organic pollutants, viruses, bacteria and other dissolved contaminants, but there is a limit to which the mechanical pressure can be put on the solution. High pressure tends to tear the semi-permeable membrane. The materials most commonly used for the filtration are cellulose acetate, cellulose butyrate and polyamide. Another method for removal of dissolved solids is electrodialysis. It is an electrochemical process in which ions migrate through ion selective semi permeable membranes. It is different from reverse osmosis because in electrodialysis it is not the pressure difference but 
an electric current which is passed through water across the membrane. The concentrated salts can be effectively removed by this method. It is based on the principle that most of the dissolved solids are positively or negatively charged. That is, they exist in the form of salts and hence have a cation and an anion and they will migrate to electrodes with an opposite charge. As you can see here, there are two types of ion selective membranes. Cation membrane which allows transfer of cations only and anion membranes which allow transfer of anions only. Let us discuss the whole mechanism in detail. A typical electrodialysis system consists of an electrolytic cell divided into three compartments using two semi-permeable membranes. Parallel channels are constructed by alternating membranes between the electrodes that is anion or cation. When electric current is passed through wastewater, the negatively charged ions migrate to the anode and positively charged ions migrate to the cathode. Therefore, the solutions in alternate channel are likely to become more concentrated and the remaining solution becomes more dilute that is ion free pure water. But there is a limitation of using electrodialysis as it is particular to dissolve solids which are small in size. Therefore, the organic molecules can not be effectively removed by it as they are larger in size than inorganic molecules and clog in the pores of semi-permeable membrane. There is another drawback as it requires high energy for desalination of concentrated feed solutions. Ion exchange technique is another method which can be used to particularly remove metals causing hardness that is manganese and iron containing solids. Ion exchanger consists of a cation exchanger coupled with anion exchanger. Ion exchange resins are insoluble, cross-linked, long chain organic polymers with a microporous structure. The functional groups attached to the chain are responsible for the ion exchanging properties. Let us discuss how this ion exchanger works. As you can see, water is first passed over the Kate ion exchanger, which is capable of exchanging its H positive ions with Kate ions of the impure water and acidic resins containing basic groups are capable of exchanging their N ions with the N ions of impure water. The overall effect is the removal of Kate ionic and N ionic impurities present in water. Kate ion exchange resins are regenerated by passing a dilute solution of HCl through them. Similarly, N ion exchange resins are regenerated by passing a dilute solution of NaOH through them. Highly acidic or alkaline water can be treated by this process and it can remove hardness of water. After the removal of suspended and dissolved solids, the removal of nutrients that is nitrogen containing compounds and phosphate is very important because excess of nutrients causes eutrophication. Nitrogen exists in a variety of forms in wastewater. In water, ammonia exists in two forms. One is as ammonia gas and the other is as ammonium ion. Increasing the pH, the ammonium ions convert it into NH3 gas. Most of the dissolved ammonia gas may be expelled from water into the atmosphere. It is a simple desorption process which is used to lower the ammonia content of wastewater. Lime or caustic soda is added to the wastewater until the pH reaches 10.8 to 11.5 and at such high pH 
ammonium ions converts into ammonia gas. Nitrogen can also be removed by a second method that is nitrification and denitrification. This involves the utilization of aerobic bacteria and converts ammonium ions into nitrates. Then on denitrification, different bacteria convert nitrates to nitrogen gas. This can be understood by the reactions shown here. In nitrification step, ammonia is first converted into nitrites by nitrosomonas and further oxidation of nitrite to nitrate occurs by nitrobacteria. The second step of this process is denitrification by anaerobic bacteria like pseudomonas which causes reduction of nitrates to nitrogen gas. Phosphorus in wastewater mainly exists in the forms of hydrogen phosphate. It could be removed chemically and biologically. The chemical method for the removal of phosphorus involves the addition of lime and alum. In this process, calcium hydroxide combines with phosphate in alkaline medium to form calcium hydroxypatite, which is insoluble in water and is therefore precipitated out. On the other hand, in biological method, the sludge from sedimentation tanks is subjected to anaerobic conditions where microorganisms assimilate organic matter as well as phosphorus at a very high rate. Once the microorganisms have absorbed the phosphorus, they are removed as waste activated sludge, thus carrying with them high concentrations of phosphorus. Let us now discuss a case study on the Ganga River pollution. As you all know, most religious people believe in the use of holy water. The purity of this water comes from belief in its known historical and unknown mythological origins. The inaccessibility of remote sources of such water elevate the importance even further. In India, the water of the river Ganga is treated with such reverence. The river Ganga occupies a unique position in the cultural ethos of India. The major problem of pollution from domestic municipal sewage 1.34 into 106 N3 D1 arising from the 25 selected towns lying along the river was handled directly by financing the creation of facilities for interception, diversion and the treatment of wastewater and also by preventing other city wastes from entering the river. The laying of sewers and the renovation of old sewerage was restricted only to trap the existing surface drains flowing into the river. Facilities for solid waste collection using mechanized equipment, sanitary landfill, low-cost toilet complexes, partly subsidized individual poor flush toilets, 28 electric crematoriums for human corpses, and 35 schemes of riverfront development for safer ritualistic bathing were also included. A total of 261 such projects were carried out in the 25 towns selected. About 100 industries were identified on the main river itself. 68 of these were considered grossly polluting and were discharging 260 into 103 M3 of wastewater into the river. Under the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974 and Environment Protection Act 1986, 55 industrial units generating 232 into 103 M3 out of the total of 68 identified grossly polluting industrial units complied and installed effluent treatment plants. In addition, two others have treatment plants under construction and currently one unit does not have a treatment plan. Legal proceedings have been taken against the remaining 12 industrial units which were closed down for non-compliance. The pollution of the river, although classified as environmental, 
was also the direct outcome of a deeper social problem emerging from long-term public indifference, diffidence and apathy, and a lack of public awareness, education, and social values, and above all, from poverty. In recognition of the necessity of the involvement of people for the sustainability and success of the action plan, due importance was given to generating awareness through intensive publicity campaigns using the press and electronic media, audio-visual approaches, leaflets and hoardings, as well as organizing public programs for spreading the message effectively. In spite of full financial support for the project and in spite of a heavy involvement of about 39 well-known NGOs to organize all these activities, the program has had only limited public impact and has even received some criticism. Other similar awareness generating programs involving school children from many schools in the project towns were received with greater enthusiasm. These efforts to induce a change in social behavior are meandering sluggishly like the Ganga itself. Now let us summarize what we have learned till now. We discussed the various techniques used in tertiary water treatment. We have learned that in order to meet the quality of effluent provided by the secondary treatment, it is essential to carry out some additional treatments usually referred to as advanced treatments. Different methods are used in advanced waste treatment to satisfy the goals of wastewater treatment which include the removal of suspended solids, dissolved solids, plant nutrients and toxic substances. These suspended solids are removed by the process of micro-straining. On the other hand, the dissolved solids and ions can be removed by ion exchange method, reverse osmosis and electrodialysis method, etc. Here, it is also important to remove nitrogen and phosphorus from the waste water to prevent eutrophication. There are basically two methods that we are having for removal of nitrogen from waste water, the chemical method and biological method. On the other hand, phosphorus is removed from waste water by chemical precipitation using lime. 